Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Today, I'm gonna to explain how to replace the lace part on your boa dials if you're unfortunate enough to have them break. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different types, designs, and colors of cycling shoe, but there is one common theme among many of them, and that is the use of a boa dial. This is an IP1 dial, but there are a few different designs used, although this is probably one of the most common. Now, over time, the lace part of this could possibly wear away, or if you've crashed, it may all be damaged and completely broken. The wire here that's introduced into the boa system is called the CS1 and it is in fact a stainless steel wire with a nylon outer coating. It is in fact 49 individual stainless steel strands that make up this little cable. The ratchet system here is inside the boa dial and this is used to allow you to tighten and loosen the shoe as you require, yet keep it secure once you've got it set firmly in place. And to, to lock it into place, you can just click the button down and pull it up to allow it to open and release a lot of that cable tension. So what we're gonna to need today is this little tool here, which is a T6 Torx piece. Now chances are, when you got your new shoes out of the box, you're far too excited to get them on your feet and you probably had this tucked away in the box and maybe even threw it to the side, thinking nothing more of it. However, when you do get to the point of needing to replace the laces or adjust or fix anything to do with your boa system, this is the tool you're gonna to need. Now, if you can't find it, it is just a T6 Torx piece, so you can just find one online and buy a little one that'll work perfectly. First step before we start removing anything from our shoes is to have a look at how the cable and lace is rooted through your shoe, because you're gonna to need to replicate this, so it's always a good idea to maybe just take a picture on your phone so you've got something to reference back to. Now what we're gonna to need to do is take our small Torx key, place this into the hole in the center of the boa dial. Just find that, sit that in place, and then we can turn and undo this. It shouldn't be too tight. Obviously it's fairly small, so it can't be, can't be too crazy. And then once that loosens off, we'll be able to remove this top section off here and we've got that little screw held in place and this should all stay as one piece and we can set that to the side and make sure we don't lose it and then inside here like you can see this purple color is the spool or reel which holds all of the lace as we do the boa system up to remove this we can just use the end of our t6 torx piece and carefully lift and pick that up out of the way, like so. Once that's out of the way, we can start to unravel it. Now, it might look a little bit confusing or daunting having this cable going everywhere, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. So inside this spool, like I said, we've got the points where the lace is anchored. What we need to do is unloop all of that. It's just a case of pushing that through, taking your time, being a little bit patient. What I find is helpful is using your little Torx piece to help unloop some of this stuff. Um, so that that means we can then remove all of the lace off of the spool and then start to guide it out. Bear with. So we can unloop the remaining bits here, which is a bit of a faff and fiddle to get out, but there we go, there's one. So we can now rope this all the way out through the shoe. Pull that out. Again, this was why it's always a good idea to take a picture of how the lace was rooted through the shoe. Now, if you're unfortunate enough that the lace has broken, you're gonna to need to get all of the broken pieces, so two ends, presumably, because it'll still be attached into the spool. And then when we lay it out onto our workbench, we can see just how long we need to make our new lace. Because when you get one, you will have to cut it to the correct length because it varies between all the different shoes. So try to lay out the pieces to gauge how long to cut it. Once you've got your lace laid out and the pieces joined together, if yours is broken, you can then measure it, ready to cut your new lace to the correct length. Now, as I mentioned earlier, inside here are some very fine stainless steel cables, but you do need to cut them with a good side cutter. So, perfect tool for the job are the sort of cable cutters you use for cutting your gear or brake cables on your bike. This will give you a nice clean cut, meaning that it won't fray and it will last a very long time. 
So I'm at the stage of relacing the uh, left shoe and I haven't taken my own advice because I didn't take a picture of what this shoe looked like at the start. So simplest option, I'm just gonna mirror the, uh, the way the right hand side shoe is laced up, copy that across and um, hopefully I'll be back together in no time at all. So this side first, I guess. So I've got my lace looped all the way through the shoe and I can confirm it looks the same as the other one, which is always a good start. So set that to the side. And then this is how we want to end. So we've got both the laces onto the actual boa dial housing. And there's a small hole each side here, which one lace roots through and then the other one comes through. And then we can end up with both of the laces out sat there like this. Now, if you happen to have one lace that's poking out far more than the other, you just need to take a bit of time and move the root in around so that you end up with the laces at about the same length, which is about right. It's important to note that the left and right shoes have different spools on. This is to do with the little ratcheting teeth here. And also it's to do with the order of how you would lace the um, laces back into this spool. So on the left hand um, spool, for example, if you have a little L lettering facing away from yourself, you would start on the right hand hole, insert the lace through, then come back down through the middle hole and finish back up through the far left hand hole. So on the right hand spool, you would take the reverse action. So you would start on the left, feed the lace up into the center of the dial, back down through the middle hole and finish up on the right hand side. So it doesn't matter which lace you're gonna start with first, but what is important is that you always keep the lettering that indicates where it's the left or right dial facing away from you. And because this is the left hand spool, I'm gonna start first on the right hand hole. So I'm gonna guide the lace through the right hand hole, push that all the way up and through and out the other side like so. Pull plenty of that through so we've got enough to work with. Just move the shoe a little bit closer. And then we go back down and out through the middle hole. So, and that creates this little loop here, which is what we're gonna then eventually guide the remaining piece back through. So make sure we keep a bit of that loop, pull some through and then back up through the far left hole. So this point is a little bit tricky. We need to make sure we can get our loop and lace to sit over the top of that middle piece. And the reason we're doing that is to make sure the end, so this little piece here, doesn't pop back out and get in the way of this ratchet system here. So like this, we don't need any more spare lace to poke all the way through. That is plenty. And it's just a case of pulling that bit through. So none of that spare. Then we can gradually reduce the size of this loop, making sure it keeps that little piece there. Which I might have to just push that back through slightly. So that's what we need, like that. There we go. And that is secure and there's no possible way now, however tight we pull on this, this bit of lace, it will always pull that loop down tighter on the end of that cable, meaning it can't possibly come out. Right, next stage is to attach the other side of our lace. Because this is the left hand shoe, we need to remember those simple tips, which is to keep the lettering away from itself and go in first on the right hand side, guide it through, back down through the middle hole and then finish on the left, simple. At this stage of the process, we're close to having the shoe look it nearly like it did when we started this job. So we've got the spool nice and secure. And the main thing is that the lace isn't protruding anywhere from here. And it looks exactly how it looked when we first took it apart, which is always a good sign when trying to fix things. Um, so all we need to do now is pull some of this cable back through so we've not got any of it to be trapped as we're refitting the spool again. Once we're at this stage, we've got no cable in the way. We just need to flip the spool over to make sure it fits back into place. 
the same way as when we took it out. Is in place. Can again use our little T6 piece to push that in, make sure that's sat nice and flush. That looks pretty good. Next step is to put the top cap or the bow dial ratchet system back into place. And the thing with these sort of small screws, is you just need to be a little bit careful with them. Don't over tighten it. So nip it up nice, nice and secure, but not over the top. Remember it's nice and small, we don't want to break it. So that's in place, the bow dial is back in place. All we need to do now is test to see if it works. So fingers crossed. Turn, oh, look at that, perfect. So I can gradually remove all this excess lace we've got, wrap it back up onto the spool, which we know is in the right area. Oh, look at that, boom. Um, we just need to check the functionality of the shoe, really. So no, it does up, okay. And we can loosen it off, turn it the other way. Yeah, pull it through, and then we can open the ratchet out, like so. Good as the day it came out of the box. Hope you found that helpful and it's revived maybe a slightly old, tired or damaged shoes. And if you have enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section whether you prefer the boa dial or maybe traditional laces. And don't forget, subscribe to GCN Tech for all things bike tech related and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release a new video.